Jewish woman kidnapped and RAPE'd in horrific Revenge for Palestine attack. In a horrifying incident in France, a 32-year-old man from uh, Geneva, I don't know how to pronounce anything in French, um, was arrested for allegedly kidnapping, RAPEing, and making death threats against a French Jewish woman as an act of, quote, revenge for Palestine. This disturbing act of violence occurred after the two met through a dating app. The suspect's brutal intentions were shockingly clear in his message to the victim's mother, quote, good luck, you will never find your daughter again, you will never see her again, I will prostitute your daughter. The case has ignited fervent, a fervent dialogue across France with various political figures and organizations condemning the act as anti-Semitic and highlighting the dangerous intersection of anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. The trial is set for June 21st as the community and the nation grapple with the implications of this vile act. So this the story of this um crime came out last week and there's very limited information about this in english um and so also the exact timeline of when the events happen um isn't entirely clear to me because some reports were saying that they first met on the dating app in 2023 um so end of last year and then but i'm not exactly sure when this crime happen so basically somehow or another they met on a dating app like the details aren't clear and this man essentially imprisoned her in his home um rape'd her and then was texting her mother from her phone and texting her, I think maybe her ex-boyfriend, also from her phone, saying that, you know, basically, you're never going to find her, like, death threats against her, pimping threats against her, and then was and then was texting her ex-boyfriend about how this, he was doing this as revenge for Palestine. Um, yeah, Tanky is saying Intifada got globalized. I really think that that's like the best way that you can uh, tanky. You know what? Thank you. That's I think that's really the best way that you can put this. Like, yeah, exactly. Space Ellie is saying what globalize the intifada means when it's not a slogan. And that's really what it comes down to. Like, I don't I don't even know what to say. It's it's horrific and it's beyond shocking. But at the same time, I'm like yes, this is the exact result of what we've been talking about. This is the exact result of what we've been talking about. Like how do you It, it, it's hard to even gather my thoughts like I oh yeah so people are asking what happened to the woman basically what happened was they the police were able to geolocate her phone that was in his possession so they geolocated the phone and um and and rescued her um and then people are going to try to tell us that Oh, no, no, no. Like, there was no murder on October 7th. The IDF did all that. Oh, no, 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 no. There was no sexual violence on October 7th. That's all lies. But then when you continue to see people supposedly representing this movement continue to act extremely violently... It's like literally, you're like, oh, okay, so this is what this represents. Or is there any mistake about that now? Like, I 
I don't know. I feel like, I mean, it's just like mass gaslighting. No, you're not noticing any of these patterns. No, no, none of this. Yeah, Tip Hat is saying, oh, yeah, we only hate Zionists. Oh, yeah, we only hate Zionists. Give me a freaking break. It's, it's, it's such utter bullshit. Yeah, Kevlon is saying, yes, Susie, it is gaslighting. You're not supposed to notice any of the increased violence. You're not supposed to notice any of the increased attacks on just, like, random Jews. Hmm. Who have nothing to do with, like, the state of Israel. Like, you're not supposed to notice that like, it is, I mean, I think we're going to talk about the, the what's been going on at the campuses in the America nowadays, but like it is becoming harder and harder and harder and harder to genuinely say that there is not a, a fundamental aspect of anti-Semitism in this broader movement. Yeah, Shami is saying the forgotten fact the Intifada included suicide bombings against civilians. No, Shami, you get it wrong. That's justified by the people who well, believe YouTube, it. We do. YouTube, yeah, we YouTube, don't that is that. not my view. People, yeah. people don't understand that this is all justified. In fact, it's righteous to the people that really believe this. That's relevant to them. Um, but Arm, what's your reaction to what I've been saying about? Is it unfair to say that this is a representation of the movement? No, this is the most accurate representation of the movement. People don't understand what the movement actually. The, the movement requested from people in as people wanted from in Palestine. Yes, this is exactly what they, this is an exact mirror. Again, this is not an exaggeration. I think people underestimate the level of anti-Semitism that exists in the world because they think that, you know, this is just one anecdotal evidence, right? But it is an, it is an anecdote because people are limited in what they can do. But if you actually listen to people's wishes and desires and their narratives, uh, this is exactly what they want. This is what exactly they are asking for. And also, this is why we need Zionism. I just wanted to use every single opportunity uh, that these people show us that why we need uh, why Jews require a country uh, to highlight that that Zionism confirmed. Zionism confirmed every single time. This is why. Jews will never be safe anywhere in the world unless they have a country that they could call their own or could potentially go back, go to and claim citizenship. The level of hatred against Jews is so widespread globally. And again, not just Muslim countries, not just Arab countries, but not just Russia or former Soviet countries, but everywhere even in North American countries, even in Western European countries, right? It's so widespread everywhere that we cannot trust the politics of other countries and the people of Western... You could see the switch. You could see how much Europe is changing. This is why there should be always a place, a safe haven that for Jews to be able to go to because they are one of the most hated groups of people on the planet and the hatred is so deep-rooted and is so foundational within the cultures and the belief of so many different societies that they, are, they, take in, they take priority in protection. There are two groups of people, actually three, right? Three groups of people that we need to prioritize protecting because of both the level of hatred that exists against them and numbers of the vast number that they have, right? One is the Jews. Either is ex-Muslim, and the third is LGBT, right? These people are hated, and the hatred is deep, is aggressive, it's intense, and it's deep-rooted. And they're everywhere. Ex-Muslims are everywhere, LGBT everywhere, and Jews are everywhere. 
So they take priority in protection. I think, and it's it's so shameful that that is true. It's so shameful that that is true. Like what you said, like they need a place to go to where they can always be safe because they cannot be guaranteed safety anywhere else. It is so shameful that I believe that to be true within my own country. I am so deeply disturbed by that. But do I want to live in what I think is reality? Or or do I uh, do I want to like delude myself with what w- with what I wish was? You know what I mean? And it really reminds me of um there's this activist that I follow. His name is Rudy Rochman, and um he's a reservist in the IDF and um has done a lot of activism against anti-Semitism in America and also on campuses and stuff. And he says something that I think is um very bold uh but but also very powerful when he talks about especially because his his background is in doing activism against anti-semitism on campus um he says he says to students or people that he works with around the world he's like either you need to be prepared to unapologetically fight anti-semitism or you need to come home And by that, he means make Aliyah and return to Israel. It's like, if you are not prepared to stand up and fight for yourself, you need to come home. I don't think it's that black and white, but I see why why people are so nervous. Mm -hmm. Like he, but he takes a very... um, what's the word i'm looking for some of his statements are actually very controversial like he thinks that um the persecution that jews have faced and this is probably an oversimplification of his opinion but is partially their own responsibility for being people who are scared to stand up in their jewish identity and not apologize for it and be bold and and strong with it instead of always like stimulating stepping back like you know coming from a a more defensive position i'm a liberal okay so i want jews being able to have the freedom not to not to fight okay i want jews be able to be able to have whatever life they want to have okay certainly anybody telling them that yeah but i do understand where this is coming from there's i think at least right within uh, modern Jewish culture and understanding is that we have been so weak throughout history and there's a shame of their weakness um, especially given the events of World War II there are many self-reflection of why did we not fight back there are many instances where there were more Jews than Nazis that they were like uh, managing them And if they all just united, they could have just taken over them. And they didn't. And that's why they're hot. And there's a shame associated with that. And that's why in early history of Israel, uh, people weren't talking about the Holocaust that much. Like The Holocaust was something that was not talked about because they were ashamed of it. They were ashamed of being seen as so weak. Um, But eventually, there was some radio um, broadcasting of of Holocaust survivors that changed everything and Israel gave gave in to actually making Holocaust Day a thing. But the day that they picked for Holocaust Memorial in Israel is different from the rest of the world. They decided to make, pick a day that was the anniversary of one of these camps, one of this, uh, when, in one of these camps where they were killing the Jews during World War II, that they actually rose up and set the place on fire. Right. So they didn't decide they didn't decide to just remember, you know, all the times that they were being, you know, executed, killed. They picked that one part that they fought back and uh, that one example, because they were really wanting to highlight that example that they fought back. And the whole philosophy behind Israel is that we're standing up for ourselves like we're not going to take this anymore. We actually are going to respond 
to being attacked, to being treated like this. This is the whole point of Israel. That's the whole, like, we had thousands of years of people just doing whatever they want to Jews, and there was no response. Well, Israel is now a response. And that that mentality goes behind why you see so many um, Zionists and Israeli people saying that, yeah, be prepared to fight back because we're not weak anymore. We're, we're Now we're strong. Now we have Israel. Now we have a country. Now we have military. Now we have intelligence operations. Now we have a, a, a whole group of people that are just not going to take it. And are, we're united in fighting back against our enemies. That is the mentality behind Israel. Yeah. That's really powerful. Like a lot of people have been saying like, you know, we are not your Jews on trembling knees. Like we're not going to we're not going to take this anymore. And it's really interesting to see a lot of people, um, public figures and also uh, people in my personal life who have really had their Jewish identity like ignited by what's happening. Um, and it reminds me similarly to. Um, many of my Iranian friends in my personal life, who you know, uh, maybe were born in Iran, but left when they were children and um, just grew up in America. And then when the Masa uprising happened, they they would talk to me about how they're like, my Iranian identity awakened um, as, as an important aspect of who I am in my personal narrative. And, and what that means is that I have to stand up and resist and show the world who we who we really are um yeah read this one i wanted you to read this one um what is this name is that muhammad oh no. mohsen sorry I mohsen. um mohsen is saying i can't believe this is happening in the west <laughs> sorry we lift our shit whole islamic countries to not deal with this type of shit <sighs> <laughs> You know, I know a lot of people that feel this way, Mohsen. You're not alone. Yeah, I can imagine how distressing it is, especially because there are people like screaming out the top of their lungs. They're like, we left these countries for a reason and now we have to deal with this shit, which is a lot of why um, I find it kind of ironic that a lot of people don't real in my personal life, some of the strictest people on immigration are people that came from Islamic countries. Um, I know friends that are like a hundred percent supportive of Donald Trump's like Muslim ban that wasn't actually a Muslim ban, but people called it the Muslim ban. They're like, no, full blown, he did the right thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, even my friends saying... who had their lives personally impacted by those policies had their ability yeah. to move to the United States delayed by four years because of those policies. Um, that's a like, complicated. Nah, he still topic. did the right thing. <laughs> I don't want to open that's that different. because I yeah that's yes, different. Yes. There's disagreements and, over that, but and that's also anecdotal. Um, yes, but yeah, that's just what came yeah. to my mind. Right. So, um, guys, when I say there's disagreements over that, I'm not saying that I disagree with it. I'm just saying if I wanted to get into that, I would have to get into a lot of nuances that will uh, take a couple of. Do you know who makes the most amazing, gorgeous, and other adjectives that I can't use here on YouTube? Blasphemous art ever? We do! And for some reason, we are giving it away for free. Download them now using the link in the description before we change our mind.